In this video, we're going to continue on with our annual planner project, and I'm going to show you how to create the next piece of our annual plan for our macro cycles, mesocycles, notes, etc., as well as to add a little bit of interactivity to the project by being able to select the date that your game is on and having the dates up top automatically highlight to reflect that selection. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and we are starting off with the sheet the same way that we ended off with in the last video. And if you had not had a chance to check out that video, just make sure you go back and check that out to see how we got this far. As a quick reminder of how far that we've come, we were able to add a spot for our team logo, all of our um, information along the top, and then a dynamically updating date system based on the date that we choose to work off of all of the dates and the months are going to automatically update. So for today's video, we're gonna build the next piece out where we have our macro cycles, meso cycles, et cetera, and we can start to put together some of our plans and organization for our periodization template. So in order to do this, the same way that we've been doing up here, what we're going to do is add a little kind of divider um, row in between and we'll just take, in this case, row 17, and I'm going to right click and resize that down to 10. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I like to do this whenever I am creating the sections of my YTP because I just think that it um, cleans everything up nicely if we have that separation between the different areas. Now, for this um, section, I know that all of these are going to be merged together. So what I'm going to do is just take these first two cells and I'm going to merge them. And then I'm just going to drag this down for about 13 cells down to the bottom here. And this is going to put together my area. So what I'm going to do now is just put in my titles for these sections the way that I would do it. So typically I might have macro cycle, uh, meso cycle, um, notes, week, uh, microcycle, um, and then my opponent. And then for the opponent, I typically have this take up four spaces because I know that there's going to be a little bit more information that needs to go in there. So I'll just um, center align that inside. And then I usually have spaces to put in up to four games. So I'll go home game, home game, away game, away game. So this is typically how I would set up my annual plan template. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to merge these here because this is all going to be one section. So these four um, cells are gonna get merged. And then I'm going to drag these across all the way to the end so that all of them are merged in these um, kind of columns. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to put a box around this whole thing. So from a formatting standpoint, I just like to frame my different pieces in boxes. So I'll use the outer borders and then I'm gonna make it nice and thick. So this is gonna be our next section. And then the inside, I'll probably put, um, I like to use sort of a dotted line border um, on my inside just to signify where everything is. And I'll put that thick box around all of my um, different headings. And I'll do that actually in the other one as well. So this is our section now. And depending on how you wanna set up your periodization structure, you can set this up however you want. But typically, something I like to do is just, um, in these sections here, for however many, um, for whatever I want it to say, for the macro cycle, for example, maybe we wanted to go January and February, and I would just merge these cells and then call that maybe preparation. And then I could color that accordingly if I wanted to. If I wanted to have a situation where I was coloring that based on the name, I always called these the same things and I always colored them the same. What I could do is highlight all of these cells here and then go to format, conditional formatting, and where it says is not empty, what I could choose is um, text is exactly, and then maybe I call this preparation. 
And so whenever I type in preparation, it's going to automatically color that um, red. So when I hit done, if I was to make another spot and call it preparation, it would automatically be colored red. And that's a good way that you can actually make sure that all of your um, templates are kind of formatted the same way. And then if I undid that and basically dragged the cells back across to fill that back in, it's not going to be colored in anymore. Similarly, when we're doing um, the mesocycles, I typically will number my mesocycles. So what we can do here is I can apply a conditional format. So maybe I'll go to formatting, conditional formatting, and I'll use um, a formula and I'll just type in equals is even. And then the first cell that we're looking at in this case is D19 close that off and I'll give this a color of sort of a light orange. Well, not the text, sorry. I wanna give the background sort of a light orange color. And hit done. So now when I color this in, um, any of my even numbers are going to all be light orange. And then I can also put another one on here the same rule, but I'll go down to custom formula. And this time what I'm gonna do is put is odd. Is odd and then I'm gonna give it that same one again, D19 and close that off. And now you can see any cells that are odd are gonna be colored green, but let's make it say, I don't know, like a dark gray, the same way we kind of had up top when I hit done. So now what I can do with these cells is for my first sort of meso cycle, if I want it to be four weeks, I could format those. And then maybe this one, I wanted it to be um, four weeks. And then this one was only three weeks. And this was going to be meso cycle three. It's automatically going to get colored to sort of match the number that's in there. And the cool thing about doing it this way is if I wanted to, I could just drag this back across and all the formatting kind of resets. So that's just one way you can do that. Um, I don't really know why it's coloring um, the cells anyways. If I put another conditional format on there, um, let's maybe try is empty and we'll just give it none. make it white and hit done. And if I drag this, whoops, should be able to drag this to the top and order that. So all I did was put another format on there to just check whether it's empty. And an interesting thing about conditional formats is the order that they are in is actually the order that they will be sort of applied to your data. Now, another one that we wanna put in is our week number. And I want the week number actually calculated off of the date that we choose. So I'm gonna type a formula in this first box here called week number. So it's called equals week num. Open that up and then I'm gonna choose the date that I want to look at. And then it's gonna ask me for the optional type and it's gonna ask me basically what day of the week I wanna look at. In this case, we'll just look at the Sunday because that's what we've chosen to be our week. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me the number two because if we go back to here, you can see this is actually the second week um, in January, even though it's the first Sunday. And then I can now drag this across and it's going to give me all of my weeks. So that's just useful if you're doing any sort of um, planning in terms of your different weeks. I'm gonna put my formats back Microcycles are as easy as one, two, three, all the way up to 52 is generally how I would do that. They're generally not going to be um, anything formula based. And then opponents, maybe we wanted to put in our opponents here. So maybe we wanted to put, uh, I don't know, um, rival, our rival school. And you can see that when we type it in like this, um, a lot of it gets cut off. So I've given this a lot more space up and down. What I can do is in here, there's an option for text 
rotation. And if I turn the text up, you can see now that it's going to kind of sit in there so I can type in rival school. And that's going to sit sort of um, up and down in there and make sure that it all fits. Now finally, what I want to do is have an option to actually be able to drop down menu, select the games and then have them automatically highlight on our, um, our date chart. So I'm going to just select these four cells and I'm going to go to data, data validation, and I'm going to select a list from range and my range is actually going to be D10 to D16 because that's where our dates are going to sit. I want to hit OK. Because there's no dollar signs in here, I'm going to be able to drag this formula. But when I hit save, what you'll notice is I am now able to select any of those dates and they show up perfectly. Now one thing you'll see is these dates are getting cut off because I'm going to zoom in a little bit, but because in Google Sheets, the actual drop down menu gets in the way. So one, one way I've found to kind of get around this is if I go to format and then choose the number and put it to just the number the same way that we did up here, as well as turn the text direction up, you can see that it still gets shown sort of over top of the um, drop down menu. And if I bold them, you can see them a little bit easier. Okay, so that's one way to do that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the home games blue and the away games red. So what I'll do is I'm just going to apply a conditional format on these, these two cells here, and I'll go add another rule. I'll put is not empty. And I'm just gonna give it a light blue color in this case. So when I choose a value, whoops, it does not like that rule. Give me one sec here. I'm gonna give it a light blue color and I'm gonna put the, the text to black and I hit done. So when I select text in there, it's gonna to go to blue. And similarly, we'll do these ones down here, add another rule, is not empty, and we'll make the background sort of a light red color. I'm gonna zoom back out so we can see. And now what I wanna do is the last piece is I want to actually have the dates up here highlight if I choose any of these cells. So the way I can do that is I'm going to choose these dates here and I'm going to, whoops, I'm gonna put that rule back because it didn't go, hold on one sec. Add rule, is not empty, give it a light red color and hit done. Okay, so I'm gonna choose these date cells up here and I'm gonna put add another rule and I'm gonna choose a custom format. And I'm going to need to type a formula in here and the formula looks like this, equals, open this up, or sorry, equals, and I'm gonna use the or function. So what or does is it's going to check if one of two things is true, and if it is, then it's gonna return a value of true. So the first thing we wanna to check to see if it's true is that D10, and we're gonna leave it wide open so that it's going to apply to D10 or D11 or D12, et cetera. So we want D10 is equal to, in this case, D27. So I'm gonna type in D, um, we don't want the actual row to change, so I'm gonna type D dollar sign 27, or the other one is we're gonna to check to see if D10 is equal to D dollar sign 28. And when I close this off, what you can see is that the two that are matching those are highlighted in green. So when I do this, let's make those that blue color that we were using and I'm going to hit done. So now I should be able to select any of these dates and the ones that are selected are going to highlight that color. So similarly, we're gonna do almost the exact same formula and I'm just going to make them red if they're equal to the ones down below. So what I'm gonna type in is equals or open it up D10 is equal to um, D dollar sign 29 or D10 is equal to D dollar sign dollar sign 30 close that off and if it is what I want those to turn into is that red color so we'll use this red color and when I hit done what you'll notice is as I choose new values those will highlight in red so that's like an easy way that you can now turn these into something kind of dynamic 
where as we choose different values, we can highlight those um, events on our actual date calendar. Now, because we've done this this way, I should be able to just take these and drag them all the way across. And we should now be able to pick those cells in any one of these. You can see I'm getting an error right now because it's just taking the values. But what I want to do, if it will let me choose it, this error value doesn't get in the way. I actually just want to delete all the values from these. And I should also be able to, I'm going to unhighlight this one. I should also be able to control C all of these and then highlight all of the um, date values and just right click and hit paste format only. And now I should be able to select through here. Oh, it's not working completely. What we're gonna have to do is just make sure that the references are all, that they all work. So I gotta go back to my data validation and you can see that actually this is added in the dollar signs. I want to take away these dollar signs. So these were still shown as locked in references. So now that I've taken those away, I should be able to drag this across. And yeah, so now what happened was I wasn't able to select the right values because the references were locked in, but now they're more dynamic. So I should be able to go through here and just select any of the values and all of the formatting should automatically work. So all I have to do now is just put back all of my formatting the way I want it. So I want the inside borders to be the dotted lines and then the outside borders to be the thick lines and now you can see we have something that works sort of anywhere and as we select the different dates you can see that those highlight in red so i hope this video helps you out and if it did please like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out if you could share this on social media and tag me in it that would be great and i will see you in the next video thank you